has, to him, for whoever has, for whoever has, for, for whoever has, for whoever has, more shall be given, more shall be given, for whoever has, more shall be given, and whoever does not have, and whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. Even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. Even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. For whoever has, more shall be given. And whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. So consider carefully how you listen. Hey friends, welcome to Light Metaphors. This is Thomas Schwabe. I'm glad to be back uh, sharing from my heart to you. Uh, you know, I was just meditating right there. You know, I did a two-part series on meditation. The, the two primary words uh, used in the Old Testament for meditation, which is siach meditation and haga meditation. You know, siach is uh, referred to uh, or defined in the Old Testament as a, as a to ponder or to care, uh, to uh, a complaint or a cry to God. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the word for, again, pondering. And then we have haga. It's also the word uh, meditate, meditating, uh, musing, muttering to yourself. You know, it, it, it's a contemplative utterance. And so I just was demonstrating a little bit of how to meditate. And uh, just uh, right before I... Uh, started speaking to you, I was just acting it out. This is a process of meditation where you're taking a thought, a phrase, a word, and you're repeating it over and over. And there's a real uh, importance, as I shared in, in the uh, two parts of meditation, of um, us allowing uh, that to uh, be part of our lives because, you know, meditation by itself. Um, it will ingrain things within us. It's almost like it carves channels of, of uh, pathways of thought, paths of thought within us. And, and it actually embeds the very thing that we meditate on, in, it, it's embedded within us. And it's a very important thing to, to realize this because um, I'm going to share a little bit out of uh, the parable of the sower. And, you know, Jesus spoke about different types of soils. And when he was speaking about soils, he was referring to uh, men's hearts, you know, because and, and the minds and, and men of men and their hearts. And um, when he was speaking about sowing, the sower sowing his seed, he was referring to the word of God. So when we take God's thoughts or when God's thoughts are, are planted, if you will, into our hearts, it's uh, we'd be we'd be very. Uh, it would be very important for us to consider uh, the heart, our state of heart, because when that which is from God is being planted inside of us, you know, we want to have an open, like he describes, good soil. Uh, that's a person who has an open and, 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 and uh, good heart. It, it, it's, it's a heart that is um, undivided, if you will. It's a heart that, that is open and has no other uh, divided division, divided attention, if you will, inside. And it's very important, again, like how you listen. So when God's speaking and giving you words or when you're reading something, you want to really read it with an open heart and, and really uh, give it your full attention. I've heard that attention is like currency. So if, te if, if attention is like a currency, when you pay attention, you're going to get stuff what you're paying attention uh what you're paying your attention is is given to you're going to reap from that you're going to uh because your attention is like the currency you're paying attention and if you pay attention you'll receive something and and that's a real important key again is being able to pay very careful attention to the thoughts of god the words of god because it's in that place that your heart is being open and your heart is actually uh <clears throat> Un giving undivided attention and the very thing that you're receiving or you're meditating upon again we want to meditate upon these things we want them to get embedded within us the thoughts of god and as we do they're gonna we're gonna uh, allow for the process of the word to change us and to transform us as well as to to bear fruit because jesus says it's the good soil that bears fruit even a hundred times what was sown 
And it's those who hear the word and they understand it, they embrace it, they, they admit it, if you will, they draw it near to themselves and they allow it to remain in them. They allow it to take residence within them. They, uh, they uh, allow it to abide in them. And the only way we're gonna allow that to abide in us is to have an open, undivided heart to give attention to, to be very, to, to carefully uh, be attentive to, to take care, to listen to it uh, deeply uh, and to, to s deeply ponder that thing and, and treasure it in our treasure chest. I've shared in the past, the proverb says, wise men gather up knowledge. Um, there's another scripture, it talks about uh, um, his heart gathers wickedness to itself, then he goes out and spreads it. You know, the heart is that receiver and transmitter of spiritual things. And it's the soil, if you will, it's the treasure chest. And as we gather, our heart gathers the things of God, the treasures, the good treasures of God into it. Eventually, we're going to uh, uh, go out and spread it. Meditation will gather. Meditation is like a gathering of, of, of thoughts within our heart where we're consuming our heart with the thoughts some th some thoughts it could be worryful anxieties fear ex anxious fearful thoughts or it can be the thoughts that are from above uh just as jesus uh, the prophet declared for even as the the rain and the snow come down from above and do not return there without watering the earth the soil making it bare and sprout providing uh seed for the sower and bread for the eater so shall my word be uh and he talks about you know, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. And then he says again, like I just shared, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts, and my ways higher than your ways. So we're going to, as we engage with the thoughts of God, we're, we're going to allow high thoughts to enter into us. And, and that's the place of the, the soil. Again, God's going to sow these things. He wants us to be... Uh, 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 good stewards of the Word of God, if you will, inside of our hearts, to guard the Word of God in our hearts, to allow uh, the, the words to remain inside of us. And as we persevere, uh, the Word changes and will, and, and will transform or influence us. It has many functions and activities. It will save our souls, if you will, too. It talks about like receive with meekness uh, the Word engrafted, which is able to save your souls. That's the Greek word sozo, meaning to, to restore, to, uh, to, to heal, to, to restore, to um, make whole. These things are the power, the, these are the uh, effects of the Word of God as we embrace it and allow it to become engrafted in us. And so meditation will, will uh, do these things. And so as we take the word of God, we, we dwell on it. We say, you know, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. See, the one that is in the world is great, but he's not greater. And the one is in the world is the one outside of you, but there is one inside of you that is greater. Greater is he that is in me as he than he who is in the world. So I'm taking those scripture, the truth, and I'm personalizing it to myself. I'm muttering it to myself over and over. And as I do that, I'm it's the word is becoming implanted, if you will, and it, it's seeking a place of uh, permanence within you to embed, to take deep root. And as we begin to uh, uh, apply the meditation in our lives on a regular basis, it's like the soil of our hearts becomes uh, a good, good soil. It's a place of of of, uh, grow, of uh, fruitfulness where where seeds will plant, will be planted, will sprout, will take root and grow because it becomes moist. The word is like water, and God rains down upon us in that place of meditating and in a place of intimacy with him and, and a, a prayer with him and, and dwelling in his presence and, and um, soaking in his presence. Our soil, the soil of our heart becomes very moist and that's a key thing um, in the scriptures. We, we understand that Jesus talked about the seed that was sown among rocky ground is those who hear the word and um, uh, they, they receive it with joy but when persecution comes because of the word that's another thing is the enemy does not want us to uh, 
uh, lay hold of the word or the word to lay hold of us, to take deep root in us. And so when persecution comes because of the word, uh, he, 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 um, he talks about that, that person um, falls away. And, and he describes uh, that seed as growing up and then, and then uh, wilting. It's just, it's just like wilting because and he, he says that because there was no root. The soil is very hard. It's amongst rocky ground, hard ground. So the heart was, you know, had two, it was, it was not moist, if you would. It was not, it was not tilled and moist. And, and we want to have a moist heart, like uh, the soil of a heart to be moist so that when the seed is implanted and it takes root, and begins to, the roots go deep within us, um, there's, there's good soil and moist soil for it to thrive and to take deep root and begin to grow. And that's just one state in the condition of a heart and a mind in which the seed can enter into. And then we have another, uh, uh, we have another um, description of a mindset and a heart, and, and that's uh, where Jesus described about the seed that fell into um, amongst the thorns and those who hear the word and understand it. But he just talks about the cares of this world, the desire for other things, and the, uh, the deceitfulness of riches enter in and choke the word. And we don't want to come into a place where we allow uh, this word of God to enter into uh, a, a heart where our heart and mind is already uh, uh, focused on other things and being consumed by other things which become the thorns, are actually the thorns, like the worries being full of worry and anxiety and as I've shared in the past, worry is a form of meditation. But the only thing is it's meditating on the wrong thing. We don't want to meditate on anxieties and things for an anxious heart weighs a man down. But when you engage with the thoughts of God, when you pay careful attention and, and how you listen by and, and uh, taking, uh, uh, paying very careful attention uh, to the things of God and, and dwelling on those things, meditating on them, pondering, treasuring them in your heart, you'll be lifted up rather than uh, pulled down. Paul would often say in his letters in the ends, grace, uh, of, uh, grace and peace be added to you he would, through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, when, as we meditate upon the word of God, grace and peace is added to us. And so in that place, we're, we're able to rise above and, uh, if you will, like float above the chaos, the anxieties of this world, the earthly things, the thorns and thistles don't take get into our heart and weigh us down, the anxieties of life. And then the undivided attention to the Word of God is not there because uh, when our heart's in that place of, of uh, being consumed and allowing uh, the dominant uh, uh, thing, which is the things of God, the thoughts of God, or the, whatever God's speaking to you, when that's being dominant within you, there's no place for the other stuff. It's, it, it removes it and it plucks it out. It displaces it. And that's a key thing on how to rise above uh, circumstances. You get a hold of, get into the presence of God. You get a hold of the Word of God. You begin to meditate upon the very thing uh, that's opposite of what's coming against you. If you're fearful and anxious and worrying about uh, the future and stuff, uh, you know, you, you, you make room instead for what God says about your future. You know, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. The plans I have for you. God has plans already. He set them down already before the uh, creation. He planned things out for you and I. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. That's incredible. Just meditate on that thing. As you take that thing in, that the plans, he has plans for me, for you. Plans to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a future and a hope. There we go again. When you're meditating and you're, you're full of anxiety and worrying, it's usually, uh, usually future related. You're worrying about something that has not yet come. Um, what happens is uh, you're actually meditating on the wrong thing. And so we need to be able to take that, uh, that art of meditation, utilize it and, and turn 
and direct and steer our mind through meditating upon the things above, what God says instead. For God says, the plans I have for you are to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. So he's already speaking into your future. He's already in your future. He's in your past, present, and future. He's already planned out your future. So as you begin to engage in, uh, with that, with what God says, it will uh, remove and pluck up anything else that's lower. Just as I shared on... Um, <clears throat> On meditation, on Siak meditation, uh, you know, it talks about one of the roots of Siak is the word uh, uh, nasak, meaning to to pluck up and to remove, to pluck up and to remove. Again, that's also uh, uh, speaking about the power of meditation to to displace uh, the lesser things, the things that are not of God, God, things that are contrary to the thoughts of God or the Word of God. They're plucked up and removed. And we, we begin to allow that to happen as we uh, embrace and admit and allow God's words to begin to settle inside of us through meditation. And then, then we also, uh, I shared a little bit about another word, uh, that uh, related word uh, to siak, uh, to nasak, which is uh, saka, meaning to, to float or to rise above a lower level. And, and the other word, uh, sa'a, which is the word for elevation. So in the process of meditating, rather than meditating on the wrong thing, an anxious heart weighs a man down, we begin to meditate on what God says to us, has spoken to us about our future, and we're lifted up to rise above a lower level. The lower level is that earthly realm. I'm sharing these things about the uh, living in the spirit. This is all about life in the spirit. This is one of my passions is, is, is to, to share uh, regarding spiritual life, the life, life living in the spirit, and part of living in the spirit is a very uh, is is learning how to walk uh, as as a meditator, if you will, is learning to walk in the spirit, meditating on the things above. This is what Paul exhorted us to do. Now, Paul says, "Since then you have been raised with Christ. Keep seeking those things which are above, where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God." where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. As we begin to set our mind on those things above, we begin to synchronize with heaven. And because we're citizens of heaven, we're, we're, we're in the spirit, we're no longer in the flesh. But as long as we uh, catch the, the, uh, the anxieties of life and allow those things to uh, get into our heart, to take root in our heart, we're gonna be weighed down. We're gonna be living in another realm. Uh, we're not, we won't, we'll be in a sense dragged out of that place of living in peace in, in the spirit. For the mindset on the spirit is life and peace, but the mindset on the flesh is death. And so we don't wanna live in that lower earthly realm uh, that below and, and uh, walk in that place where there's the miry clay of the flesh. But God created us as sons and daughters to live and move and have our being in Him, to live in the Spirit above that. And so this is one of the key things uh, uh, regarding how to live in the Spirit, or a key component of living in the Spirit is having a mind set on things above. And we do that through in meditating and treasuring the words of God. An anxious heart weighs a man down. An anxious heart weighs a man down, but as you meditate, as you engage, you siak upon the Word of God, you ponder the Word of God, you're going to rise above instead of being weighed down. You're going to rise above uh, the lower level. You're going to go into a higher atmosphere, and as uh, Bob Jones would uh, uh, use the phrase, above the snake line, we're going to rise above the snake line, living a life where we're above the snake line. The snake line is that place of limitations where they cannot go. They can only go so far and they have to, they, they're unable to go further. So we're going to be a people that live in these times, especially in these times of uncertainty, in this time of uh, pandemic and stuff. We live in another realm and a world, another economy of heaven too. God says, the plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have, I know my plans, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. That's what we need to dwell on. That's what will displace, remove, and pluck up uh, the other thoughts that are trying to crowd out. See, Jesus talked about, uh, uh, you know, how the, the word sown amongst, again, the thorns, the thorns grow up together by association with or because uh, we have admit, admit these things near into our hearts, we admit them. So what happens, they grow up together and it talks about how the, the thorns choke the word of God out. 
and it bore no fruit. The word choke, uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, it's the word uh, that speaks of, is defined as to strangle or to drown by association, or, uh, you know, to drown out, to suffocate. And we don't want our, the garden of our heart to be loaded with uh, uh, thorns that will, uh, that's where the undivided attention or divided attention comes. And, and this other thing is competing with the word, with, the, uh, with our attention upon God. It's competing with it and it's, it's, it's choking it out. It's suffocating it. It's drowning it out. It's to throng, to drown out, to suffocate, uh, to uh, uh, strangle. And therefore it doesn't produce fruit. So we want to be a people that know how to guard our hearts and to meditate so that we can rise above and uh, uh, soar. And, and, and Jesus talked about this soil too, this good soil being a soil of the person who knows how to hold fast to the Word of God, to hold it fast. In one of my pieces of artwork, I call it the Keeper of Revelation. It's an eagle claw that's clawing down on a blue or uh, uh, an orb. And this claw is just clutching and the, the talons of the, the eagle uh, claw are blue because it's penetrated into revelation. It's holding revelation, which is the color for communion and revelation blue. And, and that, that claw, it, it speaks of the, a heart that just holds down the word of God, revelation. It, it holds it fast. It, sees upon, it seizes upon the word. Um, just like an eagle seizes upon its prey when it grabs hold of it. And that's how we, God desires a heart to be. That's the, a picture, that's the heart of good soil, if you will. It's a person who holds it fast, who keeps it, who possesses the word, uh, who holds it down and in due time and, and persevering with it, allows it to grow and to mature in, in its various stages and, and to bear fruit even a hundredfold. And so the, we don't want the, uh, the enemy to, to uh, take that away from us to, through the cares and worries and desires for other things and, and, and divided attention and rob us of those things. It's he, he'll, he'll, uh, we don't want to have a, a hardened heart either. That, that's another soil. Jesus said he, the, the sower sowed, some fell on the road, beside the road, and the birds came in and, and devoured the seed. That's the demonic in spirit just easily plucking away what's given. You know, people hear, uh, hear the word of God, they hear a truth that could set them free, but their heart, our, uh, their heart can become, our heart can become so hardened like, like a road, if you will, and it's, there's no place where the seed lands and takes root because it's like a road and it's hard. And so therefore it's exposed and the enemy just easily snatches it away so that it cannot be saved. Um, and when we're talking about salvation, it's not just saved from hell, if you will, but it's the salvation of the soul. It's the soul that's restoring and healing and making whole our entire being. And so we, wanna, we need to be careful that w the enemy does not take away uh, you know, uh, what God has put into us. And Jesus talks about, um, again, like I said, like I meditated in the, beginning, again, in the beginning, so take care how you listen. For whoever has, to him more shall be given. See, when you have it, you embrace it. You, you treasure it. You own it. It's become part of you. It's been embedded in you. It's engrafted. And when, it's, when that's done, uh, you know, you have. You have what you heard. When you hear, have what you hear. Own it. Take ownership of it admit it, accept it, uh, let it dwell and take residence in you. And as you do that, I guarantee more shall be given to you. But whoever does not have, whoever does not admit it, he does not give a, his attention to it, he uh, uh, like skims over it, You, what you think you had, it's actually going to be taken away from you. It's, it's going to be removed from you. And I just am thinking about the realm of dreams. That's why it's so important to value our dreams. And one of the ways we value our dreams is to write them up, write them down in our journal or record them in your recorder when you wake up because it will be taken away in a sense, will we'll drift away and you'll forget about it. And it's very important. We all do it. I'm, I've done it and, and where I've woken up and, and I, I knew I had the dream fresh in my mind, but I kind of was so tired. So I'll go back to see if I'll remember it. But basic, but when I did that, it just, faded away and I forgot it. And so we need to, that's one way to value the things of God, to value the dream realms and dream, the communication of God through dreams and also to value the word of God. We need to be able to take, uh, pay attention to it and, and hold fast to it, seize upon it, hold it down. Uh, because whoever does not have, have it again. 
Even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. Even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. You know, God's desiring us to be a people who uh, delight ourselves in the law of the Lord or the word of God and to meditate upon it day and night for he shall be like a tree planted by streams of, of water. And uh, that's the picture in, uh, we need to get is that our life, we're like a tree and we want our root system to be uh, of our life to be drawing from uh, the, the spirit, drawing from the word of God right next to the river, the spirit presence planted in the presence of God and receiving from the Word of God and the Spirit of God and in that place uh, our life is becomes uh, uh, fruitful and we bear fruit in in our season and that's a place of moisture a place of a, a good soil will occur within our heart and and things will grow forth so I just want to encourage you in these times to be a meditator in the Word of God be a meditator of the things above you know, take that art that God's given you, that spiritual art, that spiritual discipline, and exercise it. Because I'm telling you, if you do this and you treasure these things, you will see the fruit of them. You won't have to wait uh, when circumstances come in your life and you're all anxious and then all of a sudden I got to read Psalm, uh, Psalm 91, you know, the pandemic. Everyone's reading Psalm 91 and meditating on Psalm 91. Well, if you had that already implanted, those things that God speaks about, your life and protection already uh, inside of you rolling it around and have pondered it have treasured it in your heart you already have like a a, a, a stronghold of God's protection a, a, a revelation a, a, a rooting in God's love and protection for you and it'll sustain you in those times you'll rise above you'll be able to float it's like you'll be in the ark of God rising above the storm may God bless you and thanks again for checking out light metaphors uh, hit that subscribe button if you have it and hit that like button as well and uh, uh, we'll see you again uh, may you just uh, be able to float in these times above the chaos because you can in Christ you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and enables you God bless you friends